Hello Oswego and welcome to this week's edition of Oswego Takeover 2.0. I'm Kyle Crossman. And I'm Lauren Furlong. So Lauren, did you hear that Fab Mello passed away? Actually, yeah, I saw that on the news over the weekend, but how come you're asking? Well, I know he was on a starting, or he was a starting signer for the 2012 Syracuse squad. So. Actually, yeah, they were the number one seed, but Cole and Jake have a segment discussing his passing, so let's send it over to them. Hello, I'm Jake Caster. And I'm Cole Shirtliff. And welcome to the first edition of Sports, Sports, Sports with Jake and Cole. You know, Jake, I'm really excited to be able to be a part of the show with you. I am too. It's going to be cool to be able to recap all of our local sports here in the high school and around New York. Well, let's get on with the show. So, Jake, have you been able to get out to any of the uh, Varsity Boys hockey games this season? Actually, I haven't gotten to one this year, but I heard they recently won their senior night and are now preparing for sectionals. Yeah, they did. They had a huge win against rival Clinton last Tuesday on their senior night with five seniors contributing goals in a shutout win. Jared Dudley also racked up 30 saves. That's awesome to hear. Who are the seniors that scored in the game? Nick Shalvo, Bryce Horgan, Brandon Myers, Nate Schultze, and Jamer Simmons all contributed one goal to the Bucks effort. You know, Cole, I was really impressed by the goal Nate Schultze had. Let's see it again. Not many high school players could make a move like that, score, and barrel roll into the defender's legs. You know, Jake, I couldn't agree more. He won't see another goal like that in a high school game for a while. He really showed off the athleticism and finished that play with a top-notch celly. It's great to see that the boys ended their senior seasons on such a high note. Hopefully they can carry the momentum from their late success into sectionals and make a deep run. Agreed. We wish the hockey team the best of luck in sectionals. Keep it rolling for the Bucks, boys. So Cole, as we both know, the boys basketball team recently received bad news. Finding out their senior night game against Marcellus was canceled. That's got to be hard to face, Jake. After a long season, it's always nice to be acknowledged for your hard work and accomplishments. It's been a somewhat disappointing season overall with key injuries coming at bad times. With a final record of 6-12, and 12, however, the team did qualify for sectionals and hope to turn things around by making a deep postseason run. Yeah, hopefully things can work themselves out, Jake. Uh, moving on to other local basketball news, former, former Syracuse basketball player Fab Mello died on February 11th from heart-related troubles in his sleep in Brazil. That's awful to hear, Cole. He was an elite college center who played two seasons for the Syracuse Orange. 26 is too young and he'll, he will be greatly missed. Agreed. And while that is a pretty somber note to end on for our first show, make sure you turn in two weeks from now to keep in touch with your local sports news. Thank you for joining us for the first edition of Sports Sports Sports. Jake and Cole, let's send it back to the main. Wow, that was a really tough loss for Syracuse against Louisville the other night. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I can't believe they went into overtime. Yeah, I watched the whole thing and I was sort of yelling at the TV the whole time. <laughs> All right, well, on a serious note, I'm kind of hungry. We should go over to Martin's house and get some food. Martin's house? Why would we go to Martin's house? Didn't you hear? He's got a drive through at his house now. At his house? Yeah. I mean, have you seen any of his old cooking shows? No, I've never seen any of them. Oh, well, he's got a new one out, so let's check that out. So Martin, you told me to check out this new restaurant. I don't know, I'm really sketched out because of it. Because, uh, you know, he did the back burner a little bit. I mean, mac and cheese, but maybe it's got more. Maybe, maybe he's got more at this one, hopefully. So let's go check it out. Hey, is this uh, Jack's Wagon drive through Yeah, you got any spare change? No, man, I don't have any. Welcome to Jack's Wagon, how may I help you? Hi, can I order? Uh, I'll take a back burner mac and cheese. Uh, what, sir? Can I'll take, I, I'll take the back burner mac and cheese. I'm real sorry, sir. After the first season of the back burner, we do not have any more mac and cheese. Alright, so, uh, alright. Uh, what about your Mexican food? What, what Mexican food do you have? We have a variety of Mexican food. It comes in a variety of flavors of meat. 
What, what kind of meat? Like beef, chicken? I'll 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 just take beef. That that'll be all right. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Horse. I'll take beef. Horse. No, no, beef, as in the cow. Yeah, horse, as in like the stallion. No, like beef, B E E F, like burgers, like that's what it's made out of. Beef. All right, I'll just go try it down for a horse. I I want beef. All right, can, can I get something to drink? Sure, what can I get you? Uh, can I get, uh, you don't have it on here, but can I just get water? Uh, water? Uh. Yeah, W-A-T-E-R, like in the ocean, like just water, just purified water. Yeah, we're getting the water right now. Can I also get some salsa with the Mexican food? Uh, sure, as you know, the arc sauce is top grade, and it only comes from the fresh vegetables in the Smoke County. Okay, so how much am I gonna have to pay for all this? What's my what's my price? The price is gonna be twenty two eighty five. Okay, so where do, where do I pick it up? All you have to do, sir, is step out of your car and wait for all of our assistance, and he'll bring you to where you have to sit. All right, thank you. Have a nice day. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you for choosing uh, Jack Wagon. Uh, we are a little full right now, so do you mind sitting with some other guests? That's no problem. All right, follow me and uh, take your seat. Uh, here's your seat. Uh, we'll get you your food as soon as we can. All right, thank you. Right. Howdy. Uh, hi. <laughs> you don't come here often? No, I don't come here very much. <laughs> and I got some great horse meat here. You ever get that for? No, I haven't. <laughs> I remember when they got the macaroni right. That was pretty gross, but it was funny when they served it because they had them weird colors on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here you go, sir. Enjoy. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have enough cups, so we had to mix the water and salsa. But uh... Apparently, you didn't have enough food either. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about there, boy? That story come from the finest porches across America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought, what, you afraid to eat it or something? Give me that. It's crust right there. I'll tell you, how home. that's some good eats right there, boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on now. You might eat your salary. It's good for you. Oh. <laughs> if not, uh, water right there is locally made. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Dehydrated. I'll All tell right. you what. Oh, man, I love this place. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> this kid just got bumped oh. in the gold milk. <laughs> <laughs> he got those in the gold milk. We're <laughs> gonna darn this place and dang sauces in there. Grade F kind of health regulations. What is this complex taste? Oh my goodness, I forgot my chocolate milky. Man, I shouldn't know what I've been getting into on left Alabama. Oh my goodness. What is this place? Yeah, I, no, no, I'm, I'm out. I wonder who the chef was for that place. Okay, maybe we shouldn't go there. Yeah, McDonald's kind of sounds better, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we should definitely go there after this. Yeah, but before we go to McDonald's, I do have a question for you. Do you think Donald Trump's international soccer career helped his presidency? Um, I don't think Donald Trump had an international soccer career, but if he did, I'm going to assume it would help. 
Well, you're probably right, but Dane and Nate have some more sports trivia for us, so let's send it over to them. Take on some topics in national sports, so let's take a look. Oh, Vanessa, do you think Donald Trump's international soccer career helped him win the presidency? Definitely not, because that's probably not true. Do you know who he played for? No. He played for Mexico in the 70s. Um, I think him playing on Team USA and beating Mexico had a big role in it because he put them in their place. I don't think it helped at all, but then again, I don't really bother with politics. Do you think he helped the Mexico soccer team like in the 70s and 80s? I don't know, but, <laughs> but um, <laughs> for the sake of time, I'm going to say yes, I do. Um, I definitely think it made him more popular, so probably. All right, thank you very much. Number two, have you ever seen Mr. Mulverhill's Super Bowl ring? He's told me a lot of stories about it, but I've never seen it. How do you feel about that? I feel like that's dumb. So how do you feel about once they get to April, May, and June in the NBA regular season about them moving to some games like actually outside in the warmer weather? How do you feel about that? Uh, I think they shouldn't do that because then if it's ever raining, I mean, it's just going to ruin the game and... I think they should just keep it indoors. Pretty good point. And I'm not really a fan of the NBA, but I think it would be really cool. I don't think it'll have a big effect, and I think it's actually a wonderful idea because with hockey, they're moving the games outdoors, so why doesn't basketball do it? Uh, I don't really care. I don't really watch basketball, so I don't really care. <laughs> I'm here with captain of the boys' hockey team, Mr. Nate Sheldsky. So, Nate, you have a big upcoming sectional game this Thursday against Auburn. Do you think you can beat those guys? Uh, I think we can. We just need to work together as a team and uh, trust our coach and go out and do what he tells us to do. you played those guys before, haven't you? Yes, we have. We've played them once at home and we beat them, and we played them once in Auburn and lost to them. So it's going to be a really good game. Very interesting. So I know you're the captain of this team. How have you been a leader to this team throughout the year? Um, I just have to keep the boys going, you know, make sure they're in the gym, being, getting ready for the game, eating right, and not doing stupid stuff. And uh, I just have to keep the team together to make sure that we come out on top each and every game. If you guys beat Auburn, you would probably most likely play Skinny Atlas. I know they're a very good team, like state-ranked. Uh, how far do you think this team can go? Uh, we can go as far as the state championship. We just have to play buck hockey and we can beat any team if we shut down the top guys then we take out the team we can beat anybody as long as we play hard and lastly do you plan on playing hockey after high school I do I plan on playing uh, juniors or something like that after high school and uh, hopefully play collegiate hockey alright thank you very much that's Nate Shelsky captain of the boys hockey team our first topic is Syracuse basketball in my opinion Jim Beheim's club is one of the best teams in the country at home, but the truth really comes out when they're away from the Dome. With only two down-to-the-wire road wins, the Orange have to step up their game in order to get into the Big Dance 1 and get to where they were last year. Of course, that's the Final Four. It'll be interesting to see if the Cutes can make some magic in the month of March once again. Our next topic, the Cleveland Cavaliers. LeBron James just coming off his third NBA title, first with the Cavaliers, and already crying this season about the Cavs need another playmaker. Is Carmelo Anthony the answer? I guess we'll have to wait and see. One thing for sure is, though, Steph and the Dubs are out for revenge. Our third topic, Super Bowl 51. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick winning the fifth Super Bowl for the Patriots in their franchise history, and their fifth Super Bowl together. As you can see from my shirt right here, I'm a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, if you didn't already know that. Let's just say, at least I wasn't an Atlanta Falcons fan. As for the actual game, I have no comment. Our fourth and final topic, Major League Baseball. Of course, it's still the offseason, but spring training's right around the corner as teams like the Atlanta Braves and the New York Yankees look to incorporate the variety of young talent. A few big questions coming in. Can Gary Sanchez do it again for the Bronx Bombers? And can the Cubs repeat? I say yes to both, and it will be interesting to see what develops through this upcoming season. That's all for this week with Dane and Nate in the afternoon. Let's send it back to the anchors. Okay, I definitely wouldn't have been able to answer those questions.
You know, I'm a pretty big sports fan, so I probably would have been able to answer them all. Oh, all right. But on another note, Kyle, did you see all those hearts on all the lockers at our school? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I heard one person did all of that. It's incredible. I know, but Johnny Rice has a segment about it, so let's send it over to him. All hearts seen on lockers during Valentine's Day was one person, not a group or a club. I ended up catching up with some people to see what they thought of all the hearts on lockers. So how do you like all the hearts that have been placed on every locker? I love it. I think the Cupid did it. Well, I think it's a lot of work and it's kind of cool. I think it was a great idea. Everyone needs to know that they're appreciated and they're important to somebody. I think walking in on a Valentine's Day, some people might be feeling a little lonely or left out. And it shows that the school or people care about them and hopefully they have a productive and positive day. I thought it was a really sweet gesture and it's going to bring a lot of people's spirits up. I thought it was really adorable and I really like it. I thought it was really nice that someone took their time to actually do this for the entire school. I thought it was a good idea for anyone that didn't have a Valentine to be able to feel more accepted because it can honestly be pretty if you go out and you feel like no one wants to be with you on Valentine's Day. Same. Um, I thought that they were really cute and it made my day. Um, I thought that it was very kind of someone to do and I felt very happy when I saw my locker. When I walked down the hallway and saw it, I actually had tears in my eyes. It was so sweet. I thought it was very uplifting and it's very kind that people spent the time to do this. So acts of kindness, I think, are wonderful for any community and we are a school community. This really pleased so many people this morning when they walked in and realized that the hearts had been put on classrooms and every locker in the school, so I think it's amazing. So my personal thoughts about this, um, because I know the student who was responsible for this, I know how passionately they feel about bringing kindness and how they felt that every student should come into school today and have a Valentine that made them feel good about themselves. Too often these types of holidays can make us feel a little sad, especially if we don't have a particular person we, we feel like we can be in love with today. So I think this was a wonderful way for everybody to come to school and feel happy. Well, thank you to whoever did that. That's all for this week's edition of Oswego Takeover 2.0. Have a fantastic week, Oswego.